Yo, what is going on everybody? Shri Kanasa here. So the $50,000 smart shopping campaigns guide. Now smart shopping campaigns are literally a gift from Google ads to us dropshippers. And there's various reasons as to why smart shoppings are so beneficial when it comes to running a dropshipping store. Unfortunately, a lot of people don't really know how to achieve the right results when it comes to smart shopping campaigns. They end up starting these campaigns right at the beginning of their Shopify store, or they launch it thinking that since it's a smart campaign, it's gonna automatically get them sales and they don't have to worry about anything. It's not as easy as that. However, smart shopping campaigns, if done right, can get you a lot of sales and a very high return on ad spend, as I'm going to be showing in this video. In fact, I've launched several different smart shopping campaigns throughout my Google Ads journey, and a lot of the times they've gotten me much better results compared to a normal shopping campaign. So smart shopping campaign, if you haven't already started using them, is something that you may wanna start looking into. But without wasting any more time, let's just find out exactly how smart shopping campaigns changed the way I did e-commerce and got me roughly $50,000 in sales. The first thing you'll have to do in order to find success with these smart shopping campaigns is to destroy that like button until it turns blue. I promise it'll take just two quick seconds. Okay, hopefully I've done that. But let's start off by talking about the perfect setup for a smart shopping campaign. Now, before actually even going into the perfect setup, I want to go over to my Google Ads account and show you guys the smart shopping campaigns which I've launched in the past for this ad account. So as you guys can see, I've spent roughly $200,000 within a year in this ad account, and it has generated me roughly $1 million. Of course, not all of the sales were measured here. But what I want to show you guys are the two chosen campaigns here. And right now I've ranked all of my campaigns based on the cost. As you guys can see, the third most highest spending campaign is a smart shopping campaign, even though it only spent around $11,000. After it spent around $11,000, I did have to restart the campaign because of fluctuations with results. And that's another thing I'll be talking about very soon. But the restarted campaign right here spent around $3,300 before I shut it off and currently I have yet another smart shopping campaign running. It hasn't spent too much money, which is why I'm not showing it here. But let's start off by looking at the first campaign to see exactly what kind of results I got with the smart shopping campaign. So as you guys can see, I spent roughly $11,205.86 to get back $42,364.02 with this campaign. So not a bad return on ad spend, about 4.0. Of course, not all of the sales were calculated correctly. But we can see that this campaign overall got about 9.7 million impressions with 60,000 clicks. And the CTR was average. It wasn't that great or about 0.63. So that's another thing a lot of people really have a misconception about. They believe that if they don't have a CTR above 1% all the time, the campaign is not going to perform positively. And that is far from the truth. As you guys already see right here with a 0.63% CTR, we were able to generate roughly 4.0 in return on ad spend. And my top campaign right here, which is not a smart shopping campaign, by the way, it's a general testing campaign, but with a 0.89% return on ad spend, we were roughly able to get 4.66 ROAS and spent 83,000 to make back 390,000, basically $400,000. But the main focus of this video is gonna be this smart shopping campaign. Exactly how can you achieve such results with smart shopping campaigns? You will have to understand what the perfect setup is for a smart shopping campaign. So when it comes to setting up a smart shopping campaign, there's really not much you have to do. There's only a few settings you have to change. And when it comes to these settings, here's the following that I recommend. The first thing is nowadays in 2021 and onwards, a minimum budget of $30 per day or more is required. And that campaign needs to run for a minimum of seven days before you make any kind of judgment regarding that campaign. So within the first seven days, it may not get you any sales and that's completely fine because a smart shopping campaign is exactly what it's called. It's very smart, but in order for the smartness to be activated, it needs time to really get it going and get the algorithm really knowing what people to show your products to. So that is why it requires about seven days in the beginning. After seven days have passed, you should expect some kind of results. If you're getting still zero results, that means there are some kind of problems with the product you've added. The products may not be a good choice for that campaign. But $30 minimum daily budget is a must. In addition, when it comes to choosing the return on ad spend percentage, here's what I recommend. I recommend setting a percentage at around 300% or higher. The more, the better usually, but I started off in the beginning 
at 300%. And usually in the past, I used to do it much lower, which is why the ROAS is only about 3.78 because with this campaign, the ROAS percentage I set was around 225. So it's not always beneficial to have a really low return on ad spend. 225% ROAS simply means 2.25 re times return on ad spend. And just because, and another key note is just because you set a number there does not mean that it, the campaign is always going to get you those results in fact with the 2.25 return on ad spend campaign as you guys can see the ROAS was around 4.0 so even with that low percentage the smart shopping campaign was able to give me good results but in 2021 and onwards i definitely recommend starting at a much higher percentage 300 percent is good that just means three times return on ad spend and that's simply because in 2021 there is increased amounts of competition with google ads and because of that we need to kind of up our level of the profit margins that we're dealing with so we can't really go too low because that means the campaign would spend a lot of money and possibly not to get you the desired result so in order to really avoid that try to set it at 300 percent or more but that is one thing you want to do in order to set up a right smart shopping campaign in addition one of the most important things you can do is have the right number of products in there by right number of products, I mean just 20 products in minimum. The more the better, but 20 to start off with is a good number. Again, that is exactly what I did with this campaign. But let's look at the second smart shopping campaign. So the results weren't as good as the first smart shopping campaign, even with a higher CTR. So as you guys can see, CTR really doesn't mean much when it comes to results because in the end, what's going to determine your results is the cost per purchase and the overall profit margins of the product. So always try to focus on the cost per purchase because that's what really matters in the end. But this campaign spent around $3,376.31 to get back roughly $9,047.89. Of course, not all the sales were calculated correctly, so the ROAS is somewhere closer to three, but still an ideal number for the return on ad spend with the smart shopping campaign. But let's move on to now the optimization. So what do you exactly do once you have the smart shopping campaign running and it's been running past the seven day mark? You have to optimize the campaign constantly to ensure that the results keep on coming positively. So one great way to optimize the campaign is by looking at the profit margins and trying to increase it over time. And by profit margins, I simply mean the return on ad spend percentage which you set. So in the beginning, we set it at 300%. If you notice the campaign is not performing as you would like, increase that percentage by 10% or 20%. So from 310, 300 to maybe 310 or 320. And the reason is so that the campaign stops spending as much money on the bad kind of traffic and starts to get you a little bit more higher quality traffic because that is exactly what happens when you increase that percentage keep it too low and what's going to happen is google is going to try to find you as many people as possible and a lot of the times the people that it finds may not really be the ideal kind of traffic which you want for your products which is why nowadays i recommend 300 percent or more but in addition, when it comes to the products, you want to kind of be excluding products every seven to 14 days. And you want to be looking at their profit margins to know when to exclude the product. Of course, if the product is overspending, if it has spent past a profit margin, but not got you a sale, that product deserves to be excluded, period. You don't want to just put it on luck and hope that that product starts getting you sales because that's very unlikely to happen with smart shopping campaigns. However, here's what you want to do and one thing a lot of people fail to do and that is every time you exclude a product, you want to make sure that you replace it with a new product addition. So if you exclude one product, add a new product in which you haven't really tested before. What I recommend with this is that if you have a smart shopping campaign running, you want to make sure that those products within the smart shopping campaign are not also within the general testing campaign. If you're testing certain products within the general testing campaign, you don't want to be putting those inside the smart shopping campaign because the smart shopping campaign will always overpower this general testing campaign. And that means if it was getting you sales, if it was spending money in this general testing campaign, it will stop spending there and start spending in the smart shopping. So normally what I do is I only add products which are not getting any impressions within the smart shopping campaign, or I add products which spent over my profit margins in my general testing campaign, but really wasn't that successful of a product. So sometimes what I notice is that when I add that unsuccessful product to a smart shopping campaign, it magically starts to do better, maybe because the smart shopping campaign is smart and knows exactly what kind of bid to run the product at, which is why it is beneficial 
to do that. In addition, I also added products from the general testing campaign, which have spent very little money or certain seasonal types of products, which I need to test right away because if it's a seasonal product and the season is in the trend right now meaning the trend is going upwards for that product right now it needs to be tested quickly and that means the smart shopping campaign will be perfect for this because as a smart shopping campaign it knows which products have the trending searches and it's going to try to show you and your products to those mostly so that is where really a smart shopping campaign shines the most but in addition to that make sure to always be adding new products every seven days or so with the smart shopping campaign if you just let the products die out sooner or later the entire campaign is also going to start to wither and that's exactly what happened with my campaign right here the second one at least because i was not really paying much attention to it i just let the products that were already in there run and what happened was over time those products started to die out started to become unprofitable and the overall campaign's ROAS began to plummet and that is exactly when I went in and I stopped the campaign to then restart it another thing with smart shopping campaigns is if you notice the ROAS start to decline over a period of time so maybe after seven days 14 days etc it is best to just restart that campaign to let it kind of re-optimize and restart from the beginning but now that we've covered these two campaigns let's look at the current running campaign which is the smart shopping campaign so we're going to change all of this now to just look at that all enabled campaigns so let's do just that all enabled and if we scroll down just a bit we can see that it is this one right here so so far it has spent 549 dollars as you guys can see i just recently restarted it within the past few weeks simply because the one previous to this was not performing as well so far it has got me 16 sales at 34 dollars per purchase and the ROAS is 3.63 so total sale amount of roughly two thousand dollars for 549 dollars ad spend so not bad at all definitely a good number and as time goes on as it gets more data this number is bound to increase and that's another beauty about smart shopping campaigns the more you let it optimize the more you let it run the smarter it gets so that's why i recommend making changes only every seven days ideally every 14 days but that is exactly how you run these profitable smart shopping campaigns and a quick look into my own fifty thousand dollar smart shopping campaigns because all of these combined have generated over fifty thousand dollars if you found any type of value in this video smash that like button and smash that subscribe button and i'll see you guys next time